Hi everyone and welcome to Lesson 1, Water in Australia, under our Case Studies tab using the Water in the World website. In this lesson we're going to look at water usage in Australia and some water scarcity issues in Australia. So your success criteria for this lesson, by the end of this lesson you need to know water in Australia and by the end of this lesson you need to be able to identify reasons behind water problems in Australia. So let's have a look at some of these now. So why does Australia have problems with water. 70% of the mainland of Australia is classified as semi-arid, arid or desert, making the second driest continent on earth after Antarctica and the driest inhabited continent, so the driest continent where people live. Most of the large cities and towns in Australia are on the east or south coast where good amounts of rainfall are received. However, the amount of people living in these areas is putting strain on the baseline water supply. So even though these areas get a good amount of rainfall, a lot of people live in these areas, which means they're using a heap of water. The north of Australia receives heavy rainfall in the monsoon season. The western and central regions of Australia receive barely any rainfall, some less than 100 millimetres per year. Australia is a large country and the distribution and availability of water is uneven. So that's the main reason there. We're such a big country, but we receive uh, uneven amounts of rainfall. Australia is a country that experiences drought regularly. This particularly impacts farmers who live inland, where there is a lot of dry land, and it's also very dry. Most central Australian towns rely on underground water as well. So task one, we're going to look at a day zero news story from Tenerfield, and we're going to answer these questions afterwards. So watch the video and think about the answers to these questions. This is where Tenerfield is located in Australia, near the New South Wales and Queensland border. So what two reasons cause fears of day zero event happening in Australia? How long has Tenerfield been in drought and is it still in drought? What words would you use to describe the appearance of the land in Tenerfield? So watching that video and then answering these three questions. Same with task two, so a day zero short film. So question one, what is eroding the land away due to a lack of water and plants? Describe the mental impact of the drought on the farmers. After watching the video, why would you say water is important for our country? And number four, it is obvious that the drought is causing a water crisis in Australia. What other pressure is causing a water crisis in Australia as well? Task three is Murundi. So, day zero event in Murundi. So, watching this video, this is where Murundi is located in, in central, kind of inland New South Wales. So, number one, what is day zero? How does Murundi get their water? Number three, what are some families considering if day zero conditions continue for a long time? And how will this affect Murundi? Number four, why don't the people like the water that is being trucked in? And number five, what is the solution to the water crisis in Murundi that they're proposing? And will this work? So watching that video and then answering these questions. Task four is just some comprehensions on this corporate map here. So click on the picture to access the Coraplet map of baseline water supply and water stress in Australia. So baseline water supply means how much water people are using versus how much surface water is available. So the more people you have, the more water they're going to use. You need to make sure you live in an area that has really high rainfall. And if you don't, you start to get baseline water stress. So if the amount of people you have outweighs the amount of water that you receive, that's when you get baseline water stress. And this is what this map shows. So we can see the areas uh, that have these really dark red colours in Australia. We can also see these globally as well. The areas that have uh, really high areas of baseline water stress are normally our areas of really high population, even though they've received good amounts of rainfall. But so many people live here, like Perth, around Melbourne, around Sydney. So many people live here that they actually are using more water than they are receiving. So what states have arid land? So looking at the key here, arid land is this dark grey here. So I'd say Western Australia, I'd say Central or Western New South Wales, and of course South Australia as well. What states have low baseline water stress? Why? Hint, read the description underneath the map link here, and then filling out the rest of these questions in your books as well. And that's your last task for this lesson. So thanks for watching guys, and remember if you want to stay updated, to any new websites that are made or any other new lessons that are made in existing websites like this one, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Thank you.